Good morning everyone and welcome to the final episode of Solent Food Action. On today's episode we are going to be cooking homemade breaded chicken goujons and homemade potato wedges. I can appreciate that not everybody has the same equipment and utensils. Just use whatever you can find in the kitchen that will help um, assist you in cooking the food. If you have any troubles, you can always go and ask your parents. But remember, it doesn't have to be the same as what I use. Just find what you can and I'm sure it'll be great. So the ingredients we'll be using for today are as followed. An egg or two, depending on how many you're cooking for. Some potatoes, breadcrumbs, plain flour, some oil, salt and pepper and finally some chicken breast okay so before we get started we're going to preheat our oven on a fan assisted oven it will be 220 degrees if it's on an electric oven it will be 240 or gas mark 7. next thing we're going to do is to fill up the kettle and boil it ready for the potatoes to go in okay so whilst the water is boiling and the oven is warming up we're going to start preparing the potatoes ready to turn them into a wedge form the idea for a potato wedge is to actually keep the skin on. Okay, so by using a sharp knife, I'm going to start by cutting my potato directly in half using a sharp knife. Like such. Remember to keep your fingers away from the blade. Once I've cut them in half, I'm then going to slice them in half again. So now we have four courses. Now, depending on on what size you want your wedges, I would probably advise cutting them down again, like such. Now the thicker the wedges are, the longer it's going to take to cook. So I'm then going to cut them down once more. Also they're a similar size, so they cook evenly whilst they're in the oven. If you have them, at two dissimilar sizes, what will happen is some will overcook and some will undercook, and that's not what we're hoping for. So, these are the wedges, some of the shape of what we're looking for. Okay, so now we've prepared the potato wedges, the next step will be to fill a medium to large saucepan with some boiling water and then continue to boil. Okay, so as you can see, I've added the boiling hot water to the pan and we're just going to wait for it to start bubbling away before we add our potato wedges in. I've also added a pinch of salt for flavour. Okay, so now I can see that the water is starting to boil away. I'm then going to add the potato wedges to the boiling hot pan. So be careful and watch any splashback with the water. Okay, so after carefully placing the wedges into the boiling water, I'm then going to continue to boil for 8 minutes. So don't forget to set a timer. So now we can continue preparing the rest of the food. So for the next step, we're going to need three separate bowls. One, two, three. It doesn't really matter what size the bowls are, just grab anything you can find. In bowl number one, we're going to add some flour. So with the flour, we're going to add a touch of salt and a touch of pepper. Now I know some people might not like pepper, but you won't taste it within the cooking. The salt and pepper is just to add seasoning to bring out the flavours within the food that we're cooking. In bowl number two, we're going to add the breadcrumbs. And in bowl number three, we're going to add two eggs. So with the eggs, we're going to give them a good Such, and we're going to leave that to one side. And finally, the last thing to prepare will be the chicken. Okay, so we're about to prepare the chicken. Using a sharp knife, what we want to do is to try and split the chicken into two because the aim here is to make all of these fillets the same size. So, we can start by slicing strips to a similar size like such again like the potato wedges 
we want them all to be as similar size as possible to make sure they cook evenly and most importantly cooked all the way through. So what I've done is I've just cut mine down in half again because it was a little bit too thick and I would be worried that it wouldn't cook all the way through. Okay, so here are my chicken strips prepared, ready to go in to the flour mix. And make sure you wash your hands thoroughly after touching the raw chicken. So in the meantime, whilst I was preparing the chicken, the timer went off for the potatoes. So no worry, just leave the chicken to one side and we'll concentrate now on getting the wedges into the oven. Carefully taking the saucepan off the hob, we are then going to carry it to the sink and use a colander or anything similar to it, anything that has the same effect to drain the water away. We're then going to pour the boiling hot water with the wedges into the colander over a sink. We then put the colander back into the saucepan and leave over a hob just to drain away any excess water. Okay, so what I've done next is I've lined a baking tray with some greaseproof paper or some baking paper. I'm now going to carefully pour the potato wedges into the baking tray. Okay, so wedges are now in the oven tray, ready to go in. And we're going to set the timer for 10 minutes. Okay, so now the wedges are in the oven, timer is set for 10 minutes, we can now get the chicken goujons into the flour, into the egg mix, and then finally into the breadcrumbs, ready to go in with the wedges after the 10 minutes. Okay, so the next thing I did was grab another baking tray and place some baking paper over it. What we're now going to do and start is the process of the chicken into all the different mixes. A good key to have for this is to have one hand that always remains dry and the other hand that is the wet hand which will be used in the egg wash. So first things first is with one hand grabbing one of the chicken fillets and dumping it into the flour. Grab another one if there's space in the bowl so I'm going to add three into my bowl. And then what I'm going to do, is I'm going to give the bowl a little shake. And then using the same hand, I'm then going to press down with the palm of my hand to really make sure the flour is covering the entire chicken. I'm then going to give it a bit of a turn. And then again, press firmly onto the chicken. Okay, so once the flour is completely coated the chicken, one piece at a time, give it a little shake off to get rid of all of the excess flour, and then we're going to dump it into the egg wash bowl. And we're going to repeat that with every piece of chicken that we've put into the flour bowl. So again, shake off the excess flour into the egg wash bowl. So again, with the final piece in the bowl, shake off the excess flour into the egg wash bowl. So that hand will remain your dry hand. With the other hand, we're then going to mix the chicken into the egg wash. Once that chicken is covered in the egg, same process as with the flour, we're going to shake off any remaining egg and then we're going to put it into the breadcrumb bowl. Same again with every piece of chicken. And then into the breadcrumbs. So that hand remains your wet hand. So with the dry hand, we're then going to give it a good shake. Make sure the breadcrumbs coat that chicken Give it a good stir with your dry hand. And then we're looking for, so again, repeat the process, press firmly with your hand, try and get the entire piece of chicken coated in breadcrumbs. And then that is what we are trying to look for. And once you're happy with that, place it onto your baking tray. So again, 
repeat the process. Shake off the excess crumbs. And then place onto your baking tray. Okay, so now they're all out of the bowls, we're then going to start fresh with the rest of the chicken. So, again, with your dry hand, chicken, into the flour mix, and then we're going to give, then a good coating in the flour, like so, press firmly with your palm, make sure the chicken is completely coated. Again, shake off the excess flour into the egg wash and continue until all of your chicken is out of the flour mix. Now the reason why the chicken goes into the flour first is because it helps the egg stick to the chicken. If you didn't use flour, the egg wash will just want to run up. What it does is it helps it stick to it, ready to go into the breadcrumbs to help bind the breadcrumbs to the chicken. And the reason why we have a dry hand and a wet hand is because if you were to use the wet hand, dipping in and out of the flour and into the breadcrumbs, it will become clumpy. And we don't want clumps of flour sticking to the chicken. So it's best to try and keep one hand dry, one hand wet if possible. Now the chicken has been covered with the egg. Ooh. Time has gone off for the potato wedges. Bear with me. So I've just checked on the potato wedges after 10 minutes and they're not quite where I want them to be. So I've popped them back into the oven at the same temperature for another five minutes. Okay, so this literally time to finish off the chicken. Chicken's been in the egg wash, shaking off all the excess egg, with each piece of chicken and then into the breadcrumbs. So with the dry hands, give them a good shake in the bowl. Make sure you coat it well in the breadcrumbs. And then use your hand again, just mix them up, turn them over, throw them around, give them a good press with your palm, and then ready to place onto the baking. Okay, so this is how they look before going into the oven. So now that five minute timer is done, I'm going to take the potato wedges out and carefully turn them over. I'm now also going to add the tray of the chicken goujons into the oven, but I'm going to turn the temperature down. I'm going to turn it down to 190 degrees on a fan oven, which would be 200 on a gas oven, which will be gas mark 6. On this temperature, I'm going to continue to cook these for a further 20 minutes, turning the goujons over after 10 minutes. So I've just realised I didn't use the oil, but I made a decision that I think the goujons will be fine without a drizzle of oil over the top of them. However, if you'd rather, you can carefully pour a drizzle of oil, whether it's olive oil, sunflower oil, vegetable oil, just over the top of it, but I've decided not to go with it. Okay, so whilst the food is in the oven, now would be a good time to clear up all that mess that you've made in the kitchen. Remember what they say, a clean workspace is a happy workspace. And also, by having a clean area all the time, it just stops bacteria spreading and potentially contaminating your food. Patiently waiting for the food. I'm so hungry. Okay, so the food's done. Let's get it out and take a look. Okay, guys, look at that. Lovely, crispy chicken goujon. That's what we're aiming to have it look like. Okay, guys, so there's the finished product. Potato wedges and chicken goujons. Okay, so just some things to remember before we finish this is that all ovens cook at different temperatures. So the timings and the temperatures that I've given you are just guidelines. Um, I constantly check on the food just to make sure nothing's burning. So you can always just open the oven, have a quick peep inside, and if you think the chips are burning, you can take them out or you can reduce the temperature. But the the guidelines I've given you have worked perfectly for me today. Before showing you the plate of food, I cut into the thickest piece of chicken just to make sure that had thoroughly cooked through, which it had, meaning that everything else would have cooked as it should. In addition to what we've cooked, if you want to have some baked beans with it, that would go very well, some peas with vegetables, that would also go well. If you just rather it is how it is, then completely up to you. Okay, so that's it for me today, guys. I hope that video has been helpful. I hope you go on to produce your own lovely, delicious food and maybe see you again soon. Enjoy.